only tissue which undergoes meiosis and after meiosis this tissue gave rise to this tissue gave rise to microspores and microspores are always haploid in nature so if the incompatibility is controlled by the gametophyte it is haploid genotype and if it is controlled by the sporophyte the genotype is going to be diploid type now once this introduction is done and the plant then the pistil has understood the right type of pollen grain has come right can be self or right can be non self it all depends upon which category the plant has chosen for its course of evolution so if a right type of pollen grain has landed on the stigma the plant is now going to allow its germination so how the germination starts this interaction will cause imbibition uh, in 11th class uh, one chapter was left 11th chapter in that chapter there is a concept called as imbibition imbibition is a process in which a solid surface is going to start absorbing things into it and start swelling so uh, this swelling uh, very is very much visible even in the cases of the wood if you have a wooden door at home you must have seen in rainy season the wooden door starts swelling the process is called as imbibition or otherwise if the grains of any cereal is added into water they start swelling that swelling is also an example of imbibition so same thing happens to the pollen grain pollen grain starts absorbing nutritive liquid from the surface of stigma and its content inside this pollen grain starts swelling as it undergoes swelling uh, if you remember i have told you that there is going to be a germ pore in every pollen grain there is going to be a germ pore in every pollen grain uh, three germ pores will be there in case of dicots and only one pore, germ pore will be there in the case of the monocots so germ pore is the only place where sporopollen is absent so that is the weakest point and the content of the inside the pollen grain starts coming out in the form of a pollen tube now this pollen tube also releases enzymes hydrolytic enzymes pectinase enzymes these enzymes are going to break down the cementing structure between the cells of the pistil so now as the cells are made to become loose pollen tube slowly starts going down and enters uh, it starts on stigma and enters into the style now style in plants can be either a solid type or a hollow type the growth of the pollen tube is going to be very fast in the case of hollow because there is already a space given by the plant but in the case of solid type of style the pollen grain has to the pollen tube has to do a lot of work and release enzyme to loosen up the cell so that it can slowly go down so that it can slowly go down into the ovary and enter into the ovule so pollen tube growth uh, pollen tube uh, was first of all uh, discovered by emiki uh, please remember a fertilization which involves pollen tube is called as siphonogamy siphonogamy so this was explained by emiki in portulaca plant portulaca is nine o'clock plant fertilization was for the first time understood by strasburger while performing experiments in lots of plants double fertilization which is a concept of your 12th class was explained by navas chin while he was performing experiment on fritillaria and lilium both fall into liliaceae family so pollen tube growth starts on the surface of stigma and then the tube goes through the style then enters the ovary and finally it reaches the ovule now inside the ovule how is it going to enter this uh, is uh, again an elaborate process so in uh, when the pollen tube enters into the ovule it may enter from the micropyle if you remember the diagrams which i drew before uh, this diagram anatropous ovule it may if it enters into the ovule from this hole this portion is called as the micropyle it is called as porogamy porogamy is quite common in maximum plants and the easiest examples are lilies sometimes in some plants exceptional plants pollen tube enters from the chalazal end this end is called as chalazal end so in that case it is called as chalazogamy chalazogamy is quite common in plants for example kisuharina but very few plants and if a pollen tube enters through the integuments 
इट इज कॉल्ड हैज मीजो गेम एग्जाम्पल इज कुकुरबिट्स नाउ वाई एग्जैक्टली डबल फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड वट एग्जैक्टली इज डबल फर्टिलाइजेशन सो इन योर टेंथ क्लास ऑल्सो यू हैव लर्न दिस कॉन्सेप्ट वेरी वेल वेन दी पोलन ट्यूब जर्मिनेट्स ऑन दिस स्टिग्मा इट्स पोलन ट्यूब इज गोइंग टू ग्रो गो ग्रो थ्रू दी स्टाइल कुड बी सॉलिड स्टाइल और ड्राइज और दी हॉलो स्टाइल एंड एज इट ग्रोज इट एब्जॉर्ब एब्जॉर्ब्स न्यूट्रीशन फ्रॉम दी फीमेल टिश्यू एंड गोज डाउन वाई इज इट गोइंग डाउन देर इज अ ग्रेट डिफिशियंसी ऑफ बोरोन एंड कैल्शियम इन द कंटेंट ऑफ पोलन ट्यूब पोलन ट्यूब ग्रोथ इज गाइडेड बाय दीज केमिकल्स एंड दैट दीज केमिकल्स आर वेरी मच इन अबंडेंस नेक्स्ट टू द एग एज इट गोज डाउन it enters through enters through the micropyle in maximum of the plants and then it passes through the nucellus okay where is nucellus it goes down and passes through the nucellus so the tube goes down passes through the nucellus and then and and release its content in one of the cell and uh, if you remember this is the egg apparatus these are the antipodal cell this is the embryo sac or the female gametophyte this large cell is called as a central cell these are the two polar nuclei and then uh, the whole thing is seven celled and eight nucleated structure as the pollen tube goes down it will be releasing its content in one of the two synergids uh, please remember one synergid will be finished or degenerated before the process of pollination and the second one will survive through the process of pollination and through the process of pollen pistil introduction and keep releasing the calcium and boron and sorbitol and these